Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Thrive Podcast. I am one of the hosts, Siobhan. I am so excited. And I'm here with the lovely Eileen, my co-host. And we have another special guest for this particular episode, the wonderful April. Hi, April. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? We're doing great. Doing great. So excited. You know, I'm so excited. And... What's so amazing is April is another life coach. So I want to let you all know. And this year, we're really excited. I'm just going to put her out there. She received her ICF credentials. Come on. Let's Let's go. For her um, as a coach, that is incredible. It's incredible. And so this particular episode is special for many reasons. One, we have officially made it to the halfway mark of the Thrive podcast. I know it's bittersweet. We only have six episodes, you all. Okay. So this is episode number three. Um, that again is based on the Thrive program created by life coaching and counseling teams to empower and equip students to thrive in all spe- all aspects of their university mm-hmm. life. This particular episode is called Mindset Matters. Mm-hmm. And we get to focus on growth mindset and mindfulness. Yeah. And so to get us started, we always like to start with a testimonial. So Elaine's going to read that testimonial yes, for us. Yes. Okay. So from the Thrive Program, someone had said, talking about failure as a stepping stone. I learned that in life, you have to face challenges and with that failure may occur. Through taking on new challenges, we gain knowledge and experience. So even though you may sometimes fail at something new, you try to face a new challenge and are not successful, there is still, still a calling over your life and there are things you will have success in. Amen. Amen. So, April, what comes to mind when you hear this testimonial? I am excited that it Mm. sounds like that individual embrace what we deem as failure. Mm -hmm. So I say we, because that's not how God sees it. Mm -hmm. So in life, in reference to this growth mindset, Mm -hmm. I have learned it's the journey is what Mm -hmm. God is looking at. He's Mm -hmm. looking at your obedience, your, your, your willingness Mm -hmm. to abide into the Mm -hmm. will of God. So therefore he honors that. Right. So I really challenge now my perception of what failure really is. If I am, walking and operating in the will of God, Mm -hmm. then I am successful no matter what the outcome is. So therefore it's so much greater than the outcome Mm -hmm. at the end. It's Mm -hmm. what's happening along the path. Mm -hmm. It's what's important. That's where the power is. Yeah. I love that April. And what a great way to get us started because that has been the theme throughout these Thrive episodes Mm. is that we're on a journey. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Um, and the moment that we can really embrace that, that we're on a journey, it really does make all the difference in the world. But to embrace it, we have to have the right mindset. Mm, and yes. that's the thing. So tell us a little bit more about Carol Dweck oh. and this growth mindset concept. <laughs> so Carol Dweck, she is a professor at Stanford, um, and she had literally did an extensive study on a group of children. Yeah. And in that study, she recognized that the kids who were willing to take on a challenge. She noticed that there was an increase in their confidence. They also gain a new skill versus the other children who did not. They kind of shy away from it, mm-hmm. which also caused stagnation when you shy away from something mm-hmm. that is ultimately created to help you grow. Right. Hence, growth mindset, Right. right. So with that being said, after doing my research on her, I recognized like, wait, let me check myself for a minute. Where am I? Mm -hmm. Where have I been in the past? What mindset did I have in the past? Mm -hmm. So she compared the fixed mindset, which seems to be very rigid Mm -hmm. and technically afraid of anything that's going to challenge you to exercise your (laughs) growth muscles, right? (laughs) Right. So I, since taking and doing that talk here through the Thrive Program, it really challenged me. Mm -hmm. It really increased my own awareness and it made me look at different challenges in life different. Yeah. Okay. And Mm -hmm. see where... I need to grow and exercise yeah. my growth mindset muscles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. And what's so amazing is she did this research on a group of students 
And it has been now in every facet of life. It's used for students in university. It's yes. used for businesses and team members, team development. Wow. How are you thinking? How are you perceiving where you are, what you can do, what mm -hmm. you're capable of? And I think a lot of times we do have those questions come up. Yeah. Like, can I do this, mm -hmm. this thing that's in front of me? Mm -hmm. Am I able to actually do well in this area? Um, as a teacher many years ago, there were students who either really got math or they felt they were horrible at math. And then when I taught reading, if they struggled in reading at any point in their life, they just felt like they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of the the class that I taught, they taught the Carol, Carol Dweck growth mindset concept. Wow. And I watched students start to shift in their oh. learning as they begin to believe that they had the capability of learning this area that they've struggled in for so long. Mm. It shows that no matter what challenge is before you, the the way in which you either soar mm -hmm. or fail to soar has everything to do with the way you think about yourself in regards to that circumstance. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. And I can attest to that. Math is definitely not one of my strong mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where I learned and experienced the growth mindset was in geometry. Yeah. Wow. Geometry. Yes. Yeah. I have to go in the summer. That was my summer class. You know? <laughs> Strategically do that in the summer, right? Get it over quick, right? Yeah. So, yes, it was geometry. And my mom had the great idea to decide to sign me up for honors because I did so great in Algebra 1. Ooh. Now, let's face it. Algebra 1 is different than geometry, Absolutely. okay? It's all 100% different. But there are some different techniques and strategies and skills that you're learning right. in those classes. I, mean, right? I don't right? use them now, but okay. But I can tell you, throughout that whole entire process, I had to learn to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. I am typically an A-B student. Challenges academically wasn't an issue for me, right? right? It right. all just came. As long as I studied, yes. I would grasp and understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Geometry was something different. Something different. It required that I reached out for resources. Mm -hmm. I had to get comfortable with asking for help. Right. Wow. So right. I got a tutor yes. and she assisted me with different things. Mm -hmm. Um, And the bottom line is when we were done with the, well, when I was done with the class, I ended up on my last test making an A. I still have that test to get today. What? I mean, it's like I was in 10th grade when that happened, yes. right? And I saved that for a purpose wow. because I struggled from the very beginning, struggling to get a C on every exam but at the very end a light bulb just turned on right and i was able to get that a wow and so that is a good illustration of what a growth mindset is mm -hmm. and i want to honor my mom in that because yeah. she could have easily pulled me out right and placed me wow. in a place of comfort right because mm -hmm. of the distress mm -hmm. that she saw me in mm -hmm. right as parents we always want to rescue right. our children but what we have to understand that sometimes that child has to go through that um period of challenge and struggle yeah to grow yeah right, mm -hmm. right. and so i honor her yeah. in allowing me to have that experience. That. So now when I face other challenges in life, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of geometry. Yeah. And I'm reminded that if I stay the course, right. if I use my resources and show up That's for it. me, yeah, the outcome will be beautiful in the end. I wow. love that. Yeah. That reminds me of Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. So don't stay in comfort. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yep. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. To be transformed takes work. And then it says, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His pleasing, perfect will. Yeah. But transformation yes. takes that work. Yes. right? How willing are you? Can I see this as an opportunity to grow? Right. We have to get out of that comfortability. Okay, God, I can put my mind to this too. But we're doing it with God. With, with him. We have with an advantage. Absolutely. The mind of Christ. Right. Yes. The That's mind right. of yes. Christ. Right. Yeah. And it's in those moments we discover who he really is. Yeah. That's right? Good. We discover 
how much and how deep his grace and his love is, yeah. is through those experiences. So therefore, we're doing a disservice to ourselves mm-hmm. spiritually yeah. by shying away for something that has just given us a moment of discomfort. Yeah, that's so good, right. April. I love that so much. Um, a lot of times they say you don't realize what's in you until you face a challenge that requires the best of what's in you to come up, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to come forward. Mm -hmm. Right. So I didn't know I had the ability to overcome that challenge, to reach this goal until I had to go through the process of Mm -hmm. doing the work, spending the time, uh, focusing, being disciplined in order for me to get there. But if I never tried, right. I could never see that. Never see Ooh, that. Jesus. And you know, one of the key words that Carol Dweck all, often shares is the power of yet. Yes. That's her quote, right? Yes. It's the power of yet. That mm-hmm. conjunction word. I just haven't gotten it yet. Mm-hmm. Yet. If we can keep that yet in our hearts and in mm-hmm. our minds about everything that we're facing and everything that we we're, we're having to uh, approach, we're having to overcome, then we know that we're going to get it after a while. By and by. Mm-hmm. That's it. So that yet is hope. Yeah. I love right? that. The yet is the hope. And um, the other component that she talks about is knowing how to praise throughout the process. Yes. So praising and recognizing what we deem as little wins. Yeah. Acknowledge them. Yeah. Because that just gives you just enough energy to keep pushing forward. Right. Yeah, I love that. And I think one thing that I've definitely struggled with pertaining to the mind is I want to get to the finish line. Mm. Yes. Like, okay, my mind is already at the, at the destination, but am I rejoicing in the little wins, right? Am I rejoicing that I am actually doing this? And even if we can't see the, the those little things that will eventually get to the destination, our mind has to think, okay, this is this is something I did. Yeah. How do we celebrate that? That's right. Right. And then even too, um, James talks about, you know, um, he said, consider it pure joy, my brother and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Yes. Pure joy is not just on the outside. It's in the inside of yeah. your mind. Okay, God, how do I praise you in the midst of me going through this trial? How do I praise you when I'm feeling uncomfortable right now? Because he knows he's using this challenge to grow you so you can also help others. Y'all, your mindset can even help other people Yes. at the same time. That confidence in your mind, right? That mm-hmm. discipline in your mm-hmm. mind mm-hmm. can bring mm-hmm. joy to others. Right. You bring that spirit of joy in you so others can see, okay, cool. This isn't just for me. It's for others too. So this is so good. I love that. That's so good. (laughs) Oh my God. That's so good. And you know what that leads to since we started this conversation Mm -hmm. about education and teachers? Um, It does become, in my past experience, I was a mental health therapist. So, and we used to talk about the concept of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Speaking of teachers and also parents, Mm -hmm. if you believe that a child can and you feed that belief Mm -hmm. what will happen, then that child too then will believe that they can too. It's contagious. It is very contagious. Yes. Yes. So all of that, even joy, is the same thing. It's it's contagious. If we believe it, we show it, and we continue to nurture it in others, it will grow. Yeah. I love that. And And so another (laughs) dynamic that I want to bring out that's really important is mindfulness. Mm. And so I think this is a perfect segue into mindfulness because we're talking about pure joy. We're talking Mm -hmm. about hopes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about feeding our beliefs. And mindfulness is a way for us to get our attention, get our focus on the right things, Mm -hmm. right? It's a moment to gather ourselves beyond maybe some of the emotions that are actually not going to move us in a positive direction. So when we talk about mindset matters, we have to also talk about mindfulness. And so when we think about mindfulness, one of the things that counseling services shared was talking about mindful walking. And I know Eileen is all about this and I am too. So at Regent University, we have 
this amazing campus, right? It's yes. so beautiful. And so last year I started my walks around campus. So I just was like, okay, this is my walk with you, Lord. I'm just going to walk and talk with you. And it's so amazing just to focus myself, to recenter myself on what truly matters. It has made yeah. all the difference in the world just to have those moments. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes when it comes to mindfulness, it's like, how do I do it? What do I do? Where do I go? How do I get to that place of stillness? And you all, it can be a walk. Mm-hmm. Yes. It could be mm-hmm. taking out a notebook and, you know, quieting the the environment that you're mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just beginning to journal, mm, to wow. write out your thoughts, write out your feelings. And, and I think that's so important is we find those ways to regather, regroup, reprioritize and reorganize what matters to mm. us. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So mindfulness is a beautiful exercise that I too participate in on a regular basis because it does set the tone of my day mm-hmm. when I do take that moment to pause. See, so there's a big difference between mindfulness and mindlessness, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So mindlessness is have you ever driven down the highway? And you're so caught up in your thoughts. Mm. You get to the next exit and you can't even remember how you got there. Yeah. yeah. That's a great example of what mindlessness is. Wow. You're just in your mind and not in that present moment. Mm. You're already forecasting, thinking ahead, or either ruminating on something in the past. Mindfulness requires you to be present in the moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of the things that we do challenge ourselves or one of the struggles that we have is sometimes we're thinking far ahead. We're already trying to figure out what the future is going to be like. No, I just, God is saying, no, I need you to be with me here. Oh, I'm already there. I just need you with me here. I love that. Be with me. Feel me. Yes. Hear me in the now, right now. That reminds me of this word desensitized. Mm. We can be desensitized in the now because mm-hmm. we're so focused and sensitive to the future. Yeah. One thing that I love to do to center myself, I think as students and even as a young adult, you start to go through all these responsibilities. You're by yourself now, a lot more and more independent and your mind can be scattered. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I love to do besides walking is doing these breath prayers. The word of God is alive. So one thing I'll do is breathe the word of God. Okay, Mm -hmm. God, though you are my shepherd, I lack nothing because his word is powerful. And sometimes we can information overload our minds. We can't even rest our minds. Mm -hmm. So what does resting your mind look like in the Lord? Because we can be desensitized, like you said, driving. Yes. It's very common. How do we get there? I'll ask myself, is that, was that a great life? (laughs) Hopefully, that is a good example. And and, and that's one of the topics we were literally discussing with one of my uh, women ministry um, last Saturday was um, taking them through a period of meditation, which is prayer Mm -hmm. and focusing on scripture and listening to what God is telling you through that scripture. And it was a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. It took us for maybe five to 10 Mm -hmm. minutes, but you can see the difference in their body structure mm. wow! when they first came in compared to having that experience and, mm. and leaving. It was a shift. Yeah. Right. I love that. It was a shift. And to hear that really stands out to me because how many days have we almost dragged ourselves through the day? Mm. Mm. But if maybe we took that one moment to focus on God, yes, to take a walk, to journal, to be present in the here, in the now, realize what you can control and what you cannot control. Man, how many bad days could have instantly turned into a better day? Absolutely. Right? Because we focus our intention like, okay, God, I know this is going on. I know this is something that I have to think about for the future. But right here in this moment, I choose to trust you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I choose to focus on the fact that you really love me and you really Mm -hmm. care about me. And one of the things that I always say that was a revelation for me is God is more invested in my future than I could ever be. Right. Because sometimes I fall short. 
Sometimes I get distracted. Yes. But God is always focused on who I am becoming. Yes. And what he has purposed me to do. And so God is more invested. And so if I at times need to leave it on God, all right, God, right here in this moment, I'm just focusing on you. The rest I'm going to leave in your hands. Amen. I'm going to leave it in your hands and I'm going to allow you to be God of my future. Yes. And God in my present. Ah, oh, that, yeah. that is so good. That reminds me, um, we can be all over the place, mm-hmm. but I was watching this one show and he, he has said, just bring your five loaves and two fish yeah. and God can do the rest. Speaking yes. of when Jesus turned the two loaves and five fish into 10,000 or 5,000. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. All you got to do. Okay, God, what can I set my mind to? He would, he always reminds me, bring your five loaves and bring your two fish. That also means in your mind too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What are your five loaves and two fish into yeah. your mind? What are you letting mm-hmm. in? Because he's not telling you to bring those thoughts into your mind. Sometimes your thoughts are not even your thoughts. They're the enemy's thoughts. That's right. Going to your mind. That's right. Yes. Take yes. every thought captive and make it, make it obedient yes. to Christ. Because that thought can be a roadblock to your success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or an opportunity to praise the Lord. Which one is it, right? Mm. Love you. right. And yeah. you know what? Being um, mindful, it doesn't mean that we're ignoring right. what's right. going on. Right. Amen. So honoring that. Oh, okay. I'm feeling nervous. Right. I, hear it. I yeah. am. Oh, so why am I nervous? Mm. What is the reason behind of this nervousness? What right. is it that I'm afraid of? Let me call it out. Right. Yes. And, and then I'm going to cast it on God's shoulders. And that's right. Cast Jesus. my kids on you. That's right. right. I'm casting this on you. Because right. you told me to come here. That's right. I'm going to show up out of obedience. Look, right. I'm going to show up. I love and it. I need you to take care of this little jittery feeling that I'm having. Right. I need you to right. remove that so that I yeah. can be what you called me to be in this moment. I love it. Yes. You all, this has been an amazing episode. Love- and, but we want to be mindful of time. Absolutely. And we Go want ahead. to be mindful of each and every one of you as we continue this journey on this Thrive Podcast together. So, April, yes. what would you say are some final thoughts you want to leave with the people about Mindset Matters, Growth Mindset, and Mindfulness? It's to challenge your concept of what failure mm-hmm. really is. Yeah. As long as you are showing up, and being obedient to the will of God, you're already successful. Yeah. Okay? I love that. And also trust. In my journey, I've learned if I lend myself to God and lean into him, mm. he is going to give me what I need yeah. in order to accomplish what he has called me to do. Right. I love it. Lend yes. And lean. Ooh, I love it. So, April, we always love to close out in prayer. Yes, God. Would you do the honors today? I'd love to. <laughs> Lord God, I just want to thank you for being who you are, God. Thank you, thank you for being our Father. Yes. Thank you, God, for being our protector. Thank you, God, for being our keeper, Lord God. Thank you, God, for being our everlasting um, resource just to give us strength to move in the areas in which you have designed and created for us, Lord Mm -hmm. God. So just thank you for your providence, God. Lord, I ask that anybody that has logged into this session, Lord God, that you show yourself to them. Let them hear your voice, Lord God. Anything that is not of you, Lord God, I'm asking that you remove that spirit from them and give them that spirit of love, power, and a sound mind, Lord God, so that they can show up for themselves, but also continue to show up in your honor and glory. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the sisters that are with me today and continue to lead and guide us as we are showing up and being obedient to your will, Lord God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, April, so much for joining us. You were remarkable, only to be expected. Thank you all for tuning in to the Thrive Podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everyone.